Hey, so I want to give you some background on uh, databases, um, SQLite, but but really just sort of relational databases. Um, we use them in Android a lot, and this is uh, a little bit of background material just to, to get you oriented. So what is a database? Uh, a database is a way of structuring data into a bunch of tables, and the tables are related to each other. So the key here is structured data, and the importance of the structuring is that it makes querying based on things like uh, a name or the time that uh, a record was entered into the database easy. And that comes up a lot in, in mobile apps. Uh, we do structure uh, data with a particular style and a particular data structure. And that is a table that has multiple rows. Each row is a unit of data. We call that unit a record. And very often, this record is going to be an object in your program that you pull in from the database, manipulate, display in some way, and then potentially uh, store back. Uh, a table can have any number of rows, but it has a fixed number of columns. And those columns correspond to attributes or fields of your object, attributes of the record. And there's a fixed number of them, and they're of a known type. So whenever you find yourself adding more columns of a particular type, you might say, you know what? I need my own table so that I can have an unlimited number of rows. Rows are unlimited, columns specified in advance. And one of the really nice things about databases is there's a very simple language called SQL, SQL, Structured Query Language, and it works on all kinds of databases, simple little single-user databases, large industrial multi-user databases. And uh, this language allows us to define our data structures and allows us to manage our tables and enables us to search our data. <clears throat> so why do we, uh, why are we so fond of databases, you know, 40, 50 years into computer science? Uh, they are powerful. You can do a lot of things with them. Uh, and the kinds of things you can do can be optimized very uh, easily by the system. And it's very easy to write queries based on this SQLite language. So from the user's perspective, it's really straightforward to use. And from the system perspective, we can do a lot of work under the covers to make it fast. So that's a good combination. That's one of the things we look for in computer science. Databases uh, scale up well. Um, they don't scale up quite internet well. Uh, there's been a lot of work on how to make sort of a Google-sized database. Uh, that work has actually shown a lot of promise in the past uh, 10 years. And now I, I think even Google has uh, globally distributed strongly consistent databases, which is wonderful. Um, manipulating data in your database is safe. And by safe, I mean it is robust to multiple users updating the data at the same time. And it's also, well, depending on the database, SQLite, the thing we're using is single user. But it can be robust in the face of multi-user. But it's also robust in the face of machines failing and of your code failing. And so failure recovery, which is one of those things where, uh, you know, they say the last 20% takes half the time. Failure recovery is a, a lot of what they're thinking about when they say that. It's the kind of thing that is easy to say. Everybody wants it, but it's very difficult to test. And it often is very complicated and costs you performance in order to engineer it, uh, in order to engineer your system type failure recovery. <clears throat> But yeah, this abstract layer is really important. What it means is once you understand the basics of SQL, you can uh, apply it to a bunch of situations uh, you know, sort of throughout your career and uh, using in, in mobile systems, on in server level systems. And that's uh, proven to be really useful because uh, it's very easy to come up to speed in terms of a database project if you um, take a look at the, the table structure. 
All right, the traditional system for uh, databases is relational. Uh, each table has a primary key. Um, that key is often auto-generated, but it doesn't have to be. It has to be unique. So it is a way to identify a row. And this is important for the underlying machinery of the database to know that there's a way to get an individual row, in this case, in the student table, I know that the ID is, is unique. And at the University of Texas, we have um, EIDs. EIDs are a primary key. They are guaranteed to be unique throughout the university system, and they identify individuals within the university. That's the same concept as a primary key in a relational database. And that's, you know, just in I guess I would call it real life. I don't know if UT is real life, but it's close, close enough for most of us. So these primary keys, every table has a set of primary keys. Um, in this case, let's see, in this case, they're all, they're all uh, maybe, um, maybe generated. Sometimes uh, your primary key can be a combination of two keys. That's allowed uh, because again, what we really need is a unique way to identify a row. But the other thing, to, the other sort of important concept here, um, besides primary key, is foreign key. And when you see a foreign key, you should really think pointer. A foreign key is a way for one table to refer to rows in another table, which is hugely important. That's basically how you build your data structure. So in this case, the, uh, these are our um, students. However, um, yeah, here, if we want to find out what this grade is, and you know, grades are the kind of thing you need multiple of, so we have an entire uh, table for grades, you need to look up the student ID and the course ID. So for a given pair of student ID and course ID, we have a unique grade, and the student ID corresponds here, the student ID corresponds to Bart Simpson. Okay, this um, foreign key, so this is a key referring to an ID in another table. That's what's foreign about it. That's a, 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 for, a different table. This is basically a pointer saying, hey, this grade object refers to this student. So the student, you know, kind of uh, has a pointer to this, this grade object or the grade object is a pointer back to the student. So it doesn't matter what the direction is. Um, you know, the same thing uh, we see in teachers, you know, here, who's teaching this, this uh, class? This class is being taught by, uh, I should have picked someone whose name is easier to pronounce, Crab Apple. Okay, so every table, uh, the row has a primary key. That's how we figure out uh, that that's guaranteed to be unique. Primary key can be a combination of, of columns. And tables refer to each other using foreign keys. And we're going to see this um, in, in all of the projects that, that we do using databases. There's a variety of database software uh, that people use. Um, the, there are sort of large offerings from major uh, corporations. Oracle is the, the uh, market leader, but Microsoft also has uh, a couple of, of databases. Um, in the um, open source world, there's uh, Postgres, uh, there's MySQL. Um, so these are also uh, extremely useful and uh, people use them in, in large um, projects. And then SQLite uh, turned out to be sort of a, a great idea where they took all the um, SQL you know, interface of a large multi-user database and said, hey, individual applications can probably really benefit from this as well. And so it's a, a, a library and it's single user, single, single process. Uh, an open source database system, and it's, there's support for it built into Android. So the important thing for us is SQLite runs as a library. It is linked into your application's process. 
it's just a way of accessing data. Um, it, it is thread safe. So if you get into a, a multi-threaded application, you can still use SQLite, but it's just not multi-process. If you want to share uh, data across different apps or different users, sorry, the different instances of the same app, um, you would need, say, a cloud database. We'll talk about that uh, later. All right, so I want to go over uh, SQL. We're just going to run through some of the syntax fairly quickly. Uh, there are many tutorials, many online uh, resources for you to learn and brush up on your SQL. I feel like it's just the kind of thing that you need to, to do some exercises, get some experience with, and it quickly becomes second nature. That's, that's one of the big advantages of, of the database world. So yeah, it's a, a standard syntax and it's, it's declarative. So what that means is you don't have to spell out a lot of your algorithm for achieving your uh, queries. You just need to specify the query and, that take, and the system takes care of figuring out how to do it in an efficient way. So there are four basic operations. Select or query is gets you a, a bunch of data according to some sort of criteria. Inserting a new record, updating an existing record. And of course, these two are quite similar, but they, they do need to be distinct. And deleting a record. And that's it. And now you can start to see some of the, the, the sort of genius of SQL is a very simple, easy to understand interface that the, the system is optimizing for you. So let's take a look at a select statement. Say select, and these are the all of these um, uh, keywords are in in bold, and they're all uppercase. Different implementations are a little different. They're mostly um, fairly case insensitive, but it just sort of helps helps you see what's going on. So we say, give me a list of columns, and if you want the whole record, you can just say star. Here. But you don't, you don't always, maybe you just want one column, so you can specify what column you want. From a given table, right? Everything is in tables, so we're going to identify what table we want. And then where is the, where a lot of the magic happens, which says, what record do I actually want? So in, in this case, I'm saying select star, so give me all of the uh, columns from this table, which is called files where this underscore ID is equal to three, which is this record right here. And this record has um, some metadata for a file. It's got a file name, it's got a size, uh, it's got a title. Okay, so that's the where clause. And then the, the once we have sort of all these records, there's a, a, a bunch of ways to group this data. So we can order, the, we can potentially group uh, group I is in here, but, but group I is, is one way of um, organizing the, the data that is returned by where. We also might want to order the data, and you can specify a column and say ascending or descending. And then we can also specify a limit. And specifying a limit is, is an obvious thing to do in the sense that, um, let's say I have a huge database with a, a billion orders that have been done you know, for my company for the past 20 years. If I want to query this table, I probably don't want uh, every order you know, going back to 1970 or whatever the beginning of time is. It was the beginning of my time. Um, but uh, um, the, limit number, the limit allows you to say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, only get 100 records. And if we're displaying things in a mobile app, uh, it's it's often useful to have that limit there to make sure that you don't run out of memory in terms of what gets returned from your select table. So um, yeah, that's 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 all the information I just did. Insert again we. Identify our table, everything is table-based in SQL. 
we have a list of columns. This could be every single column. If it is not every single column, there are default values that, that your table specifies. It says, hey, if I'm not given a particular column, what do I put in here? Because we want to make sure that all of our data in our database is clean, that there are no undefined records. There's no 9999999 for zip codes or anything weird like that. And then uh, what are the values for these columns? So we're going to insert into the file, the, oops, we're gonna, we're gonna insert into the files table. This is, this is files. Uh, data, size, title, these are our columns. And then these are the values that we're inserting. And we have string types, we have integer types, uh, floating types, booleans, it's a little bit like JSON. SQL has some, some basic data types that um, uh, suffice for a lot, of, a lot of uses. Okay. Up, update. Yeah, let's do this one. So update, again, identify the uh, table. Uh, we identify the columns. And there's a where clause which says what uh, what rows do we actually want? So in in the files table, we're going to um, update this particular column, which is the title column, for the ID number five. So we're going to update this one one record. So update is similar to insert, but you know, it does not create a new uh, record. And there's often uh, work done on an insert, like uh, there, there are, you can specify uh, rec, um, fields, it, sorry, columns in your row that are set by the database when the data is written, things like timestamps or primary keys. And uh, when you create an object, the database creates those primary keys, creates those timestamps, stores the data for you, and then you might want to use that data in your, in your app. And so create a split out from update as a, a separate operation, even though it's conceptually quite similar. And of course, we don't want our data to grow without bounds. Sometimes we lose interest in particular forms of data. And so uh, we can delete uh, from a table and we can give it uh, a where clause, again, where being the way that we uh, match a bunch of rows. In this case, uh, hey, we've got a, a we want to get rid of uh, row four. Maybe, you know, we, uh, uh, if our titles were meaningful to our app, we might delete based on the title uh, or potentially uh, based on the, the file name. There are different ways you might want to delete data. Uh, that depends on the uh, specifics of your application. So those are the, the four basic operations. And now I want to talk a little bit about foreign keys because foreign keys are important. They are the way that data is related across tables. This is the relational part of the relational database. And it's the way you, you build the structure into the database. So one way to think of the database is sort of this um, flat representation of the data that you pull in from storage and put into memory and relate with pointers. That's how often how we do it in, uh, in our mobile apps. And when we do that, these um, foreign keys become either pointers or uh, the whole um, sort of object is uh, it is incorporated into, sorry, the, it, it is with pointers. We'll have a, a, an object here, like a file object, and it will have a reference to a thumbnail object. And that thumbnail reference is a pointer to an object. And, you know, we maybe wouldn't have the ID in memory, but we would have these fields. And that brings up uh, another sort of point is, you know, there's, the storage representation of your object, and there's the memory representation of your data. And being clear in your mind uh, what these are and how they differ is important. And they're very, very similar. 
all of the uh, columns that you define in storage, they're all available to be in memory. You might not pull all of them into memory, depending on what you're doing, or you might. And then there are certain things like your primary key, which maybe only exists in storage, maybe you don't need it in memory. Or maybe you do. Maybe you want a primary key in order to refer to, to objects uh, in your memory uh, cached copies, just as you refer to them, uh, the database refers to them on storage. That's a possibility. But the understanding that the format of the object when it's in storage might be different from the format of it when it's in memory uh, is important. And then when you pull um, when you pull rows into memory, uh, a row generally becomes some sort of object, or a subset of a row becomes an object. And then foreign keys in that row are pointers or references to other objects. Okay. When you have pointers, uh, the one thing that we really don't want, which uh, exists in some programming languages and not others, is dangling pointers, or pointers that point to nothing. In the C and C++ programming languages, we have the potential for dangling pointers, and it's a constant nightmare, which is why they got rid of them in Java, and that carries over to Kotlin. However, for our databases, we also want to have this property where if we have a foreign key, that foreign key uh, points to some valid record. So this property in databases is called referential integrity. So basically, if I'm referring to a piece of data, that data better exist. And how do we enforce referential integrity? Well, if a row is removed or its ID is changed, SQLite sets the affected foreign keys either by making them null or by removing the affected row. So it's not fancy sort of what you have to do, although we're going to give an example uh, in our cloud database app where providing referential integrity uh, takes a little bit of thought. And I, I certainly got it wrong the first time, uh, but um, the, the idea uh, in just SQLite for refer referential integrity is, hey, if you've got these pointers within your uh, tables, if you uh, get rid of one of the objects that you're referring to, you need to either go and null out that pointer so that the pointer isn't pointing to anything, or remove the entire object. So in this case, we have a, a files table uh, with an ID, and this is, uh, let's say, an image file. And then here we have thumbnails for these image files, because maybe we've generated some of the, the thumbnails, maybe we haven't generated some of them. And this image ID field is our foreign key pointing back from the thumbnail to what image that corresponds to. So one option we specify to SQL can be to cascade when we delete. And so if we delete this file, that means this thumbnail, which refers to this file, we propagate the delete. And we just delete this, this thumbnail because we don't want to hang on to the thumbnail if we've deleted the image. So in this case, cascade makes absolute sense. Uh, another possibility, as we said before, instead of cascading the delete, when I get rid of this file, I can just set this thing to null. Maybe that is useful. Maybe it's not. Maybe this uh, derived work uh, has some value that you, you want, or maybe you're deleting and reforming these objects and you want to hang on to the thumbnails because you don't want to do that work every time. And you can always find this derived thumbnail from this image. That's a possibility. And so that's why you might, you might want to uh, set an object to null rather than actually cascading the delete. Okay, so it's referential integrity. Now I'm gonna go quickly over joins and this will be the last thing I talk about in this, this little section. So uh, a, jo a join 
is uh, a query across multiple related tables. And there are two types of join, an inner and an outer. Most of the time people mean an outer join when they say a join, but let's just, uh, uh, we're gonna be fully general here. Um, and uh, when we're doing joins, a lot of times, um, column, a lot of times column names are not unique. Like underscore ID is um, required by many uh, libraries within Android to be your primary key. If it is your primary key, then the Android libraries will understand how to deal with your, your rows. And so underscore ID is a very popular name. Uh, so we might have to refer to our underscore ID with a disambiguator, which is the table name. So uh, I like these little Venn diagrams to show you what we're uh, actually querying for. So here's the format of, of an inner join. We want to select a bunch of rows from uh, a set, uh, sorry, from um, uh, a particular, yeah, um, well, here, let's do this. From, we're going to specify two different tables because we're joining them, uh, where, and then here we need to say how the tables are related. And this is usually through some foreign key. And this inner join is getting the intersection of the tables. So these are records or rows in table one whose uh, foreign key is valid in table two. Um, okay, so, right, so, uh, you know, if I have a, um, you know, a bunch of files and I have a bunch of thumbnails, this would give me all of the files with valid thumbnails. Um, right, and, and, you know, this, this is basically shows this and it's sort of, um, the, the join, the, the, the sort of join part means that all of the columns in table one are merged with the columns in table two um, with the foreign key sort of taken out in the sense that it doesn't need to be represented explicitly anymore. So in this case, our thumbnail for um, file one becomes a single record, file ID one. This is our title, which comes from the original table. The thumbnail ID, which comes from the, the derived table or the joint table, the width of the thumbnail, and you know, depending on how we specify the, um, the columns, you know, these other columns from the original table can be propagated into this join. So um, yeah, the join allows us to merge the data that we're storing in two different tables based on the presence of a foreign key. And that's an inner join, which gets us the intersection. The thing that uh, people tend to do is an outer join. And the one that they tend to do most is a left outer join. I've sort of put the other ones here just for completeness sake, but these aren't even supported by SQLite. So um, the, the, the outer join is the, the one that um, people tend to use and they tend to think about. And the outer join says, give me all of the rows, okay? But for the rows that don't have the extra information in the table, just put in nulls or put in the default. And for everything else, sort of fill in the right data. So, you know, you can, you can sort of see like, all right, let's say I'm generating a, a report for all students. So I've got my student table and there are a bunch of foreign keys that point into my student table. I sort of want like all the information for this report. So I'm going to do a big join. I'm going to make sure that the, the end result of my join has every single student in there, right? Because I want all the students. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to say, oh, okay, well, they got th these grades and, and these courses and I'll have all the joined information. Now, uh, maybe they didn't take any courses yet. Maybe they, they're a newly registered student. And so in that case, they're not going to uh, have any uh, uh, records from the, the join from the, the uh, dependent tables. But we still want to make sure that we have every student record. And that's why we're doing the, the sort of left or outer join. Is it, it makes sure that we have all the records from the primary table.
Um, and so this is just the same the same example. Um, you know, we've got our, uh, our our files and we have our thumbnails, but now uh, we have foreign keys for one, we have foreign keys for five, we have no foreign keys for two, but two shows up in our results just with default values for all of the uh, additional metadata uh, fields, or you know, it's metadata in this case, but these additional uh, column names in our in our uh, derived table. So those are the the basic operations on uh, on databases. Um, they apply to databases from SQLite up to more complicated server side databases, and um, we are going to use SQLite in our app, um, Android applications, and we're also going to use a uh, cloud database which supports a significant fraction of the SQL language. Thanks.